humour comedy. Everyone's favourite way to appreciate the darker side and the spectrum of human humour without feeling slightly guilty about laughing at someone's mortal misfortune. Because after all, that's the whole point, right? From gallows humour to oversaturated gore that teeters on the edge of insanity, dark comedy is often acted as a foil to the rest of horror cinema by getting away with some of the most insane horror concepts going, all for the sake of some well deserved laughs. And luckily for us, there's a whole bunch to choose from. Hello, horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the top 5 scariest horror comedies of all time. Roll the clip. No secret, it's the meat. Uh, don't skimp on the meat. Uh, I, I got a real good eye for prime meat. <laughs> Runs in the family. <laughs> For the curious amongst you, that was the gross Drayton Sawyer telling Texas just exactly what goes in his prize winning chili in the events of Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. And it addresses an important point. Some films are comedy horrors and some films are horror comedies, but whichever way you spin it, there are just far too many classics to fit into a five point list. So consider these many honorable mentions taking a six spot all for themselves. Reanimator, Cabin in the Woods, Creep Show, From Dust Till Dawn, Night of the Creep. American Werewolf in London, Fright Night, literally the list goes on and on, but let's jump into this one. Kicking off at number five, What We Do in the Shadows, 2014. Peter. Peter. Peter, wake up. <laughs> Because we are werewolves, not swearwolves, and there is perhaps no finer horror comedy mockumentary than what we do in the shadows, mainly being that it's not exactly the most contested subgenre, but that also doesn't detract from the fact that it's one of the most hilarious and horrifying horror comedies of the past few decades. If you're yet to see what we do in the shadows, consider this a friendly reminder, because it is one of the most enjoyable experiences that a horror fan can have when it comes to modern day vampire fiction, and yes, I'm including Twilight in that. All right, that, that was a joke. Come on, this is a horror comedy list. For those of you that don't know, What We Do in the Shadows is a mockumentary written and directed by Taika Waititi and Jermaine Clement that tells the tale of a group of vampires living in modern day Wellington, New Zealand as they prowl the streets at night looking for innocent victims to feast upon to feed their cursed immortal souls. It's a fly on the wall piece that is incredibly self aware and uses those same conventions and fictional cultural perceptions of vampires as its bread and butter. And within that incredibly simple premise, it manages to find some of the most hilarious instances of gallows humour and dark comedy, often ignored in the rest of horror cinema. The most important part of this film though is that it's just so much fun to watch. It's different without ever trying to be, and nothing about this movie ever feels out of place. Also, it's spawned a spin-off TV series on FX starring some of the finest comics in British comedy, Kay Van Novak, Matt Berry and Natasha Dimitru, so after you've watched this, watch that too. Next up at number 4, Evil Dead 2, 1987. So the thing is, in 1981, Sam Raimi decided to make one of the most shocking and iconic horror movies of the decade, The Evil Dead, where Bruce Campbell's iconic Ash Williams was born in a spawn of demonic trees and deadites, and then several years later, Raimi decided to revisit his horror legacy in the only unique way that he knew how. He made his sequel a parody of itself, and in doing so, created one of the most hilarious intentional comedies in horror cinema. And I'd just like to add to that point how much of an incredibly brave move for a director to take that is and it would likely be unprecedented in today's industry. But hey, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, they do things their own way. And of course, the sequel serves to make its initial point by rehashing all of the old tropes of the first, but this time, Raimi makes them hilarious. Demonic Cabin in the Woods, Necronomicon, Deadites, Ancient Daggers, Terrifying Demonic Trees, Evil Dead 2 is literally a carbon copy of the first film, but in a strange, oddly familiar way, and that also makes things easier for the audience to digest from a comedic perspective. We expect one thing, and then and Raimi pulls the rug right from beneath us in a bright burst of slapstick gore and perfect comedic timing from Campbell, who manages to turn Ash Williams into a can't catch a break, sick of it all, anti hero in the space of 90 minutes. Now, don't get me wrong, Army of Darkness also probably deserves to be on this list, but Evil Dead 2 takes its place on originality alone. There is nothing like it, and there probably won't ever be. Coming in at number three, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, 2010. And 
talking of originality, there probably won't be anything like this film either, because there is something that is just so damn captivating when watching a fresh new take on a horror convention that lends itself perfectly to horror comedy subversion. Tucker and Dale vs Evil is one of the funniest films of the 21st century, and if like me you discovered it without having any idea on what the hell it was, then that makes for even better viewing. I legitimately went into Tucker and Dale with the perception of it being a straight up horror, and that made it even more hilarious when I realised what the hell was going on. Written and directed by Eli Craig, it tells the tale of a group of clueless college students who are convinced they're being stalked by some murderous hillbillies. Turns out though, the joke's on them, because those murderous hillbillies are actually Tucker and Dale, played by Alan Tudyk and Tyler Labine, two of the nicest guys in the forest who can't help but stare in shock and awe at those damn college kids who can't stop throwing themselves into wood chippers. I don't really want to say any more because if you haven't yet seen Tucker and Dale, please stop what you're doing and go and watch it right now. This film is hilarious, with some of the tightest dialogue and delivery in the whole of horror comedy. And more impressively, it came as the debut feature of director Eli Craig, which definitely says something about a fresh perspective. Most importantly though, despite being from a genre that is so often lauded for its nihilism and lack of moral fibre, this film has heart. Like, real heart. Swinging in at number two, Return of the Living Dead, 1985. Rabbit weasels. What? What the hell are you doing a bunch of rabid well, weasels? I was trying to explain it to you, Ernie. You know, they came in as part of a ship, and of course they weren't supposed to be rabid, you know, but... Of course. Rabid weasels. Because what do you get when you cross a few warehouse workers with an offbeat mortician, a bunch of teenage punks, and a horde of brain hungry zombies? Return of the Living Dead, of course. Perhaps one of the finest zombie satires in the whole of horror cinema. And the beauty of this film, as well as the main reason why it works so well as a comedy, is in its DIY sensibility. It pretty much took the whole meaning of punk culture, threw it into a blender with a few semi sentient zombies, and out we got Return of the Living Dead. But also, despite demonstrating some of the most insanely entertaining physical effects of the 80s, the reason that this film is so damn funny isn't because of the over the top gross outs, it's because of its dialogue and deadpan delivery. This film has one of the funniest lines in horror cinema that systematically manages to poke fun at the zombie genre and horror conventions in general. I won't spoil it for you, but when you know, you know. This film is everything you'd expect from a zombie apocalypse, only if it went to clown school and somehow managed to become an expert in every slapstick trick in the book. It's like airplane just without the airplane and a warehouse full of brain hungry zombies. And despite all of that, it's not dated in any way. There's a reason why the true classics of both horror and comedy always stand the test of time, and 1985's Return of the Living Dead is both of those things at once. Yeah, of course it makes this list. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, Shaun of the Dead, 2004. Stay in your homes, make no attempt to reach loved ones, and avoid all physical contact with the assailants. Do you believe everything you hear on TV? Because although this particular number one spot may come across as a little biased, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Shaun of the Dead is the greatest horror comedy ever made. There, yeah, I said it. And well, it is. So far anyway, and much like Return of the Living Dead, it relies on the subversion of horror convention to find the vast majority of its humour, but the thing that sets these two apart is that in a strange, uniquely British fashion, Shaun of the Dead actually still somehow manages to hold up as a good zombie apocalypse movie. Again, unlike Return of the Living Dead, it doesn't necessarily rely on the undead hordes of zombies to find its humour by poking fun at the concept, but instead finds it in the frustrated intrusion of the main cast because, let's face it, if a zombie apocalypse did happen in Britain, it would be more of a massive inconvenience than anything else, personified in this case by the brilliant Simon Pegg who plays Sean alongside his layabout lovable roommate Ed, played by the resounding Nick Frost. Sean of the Dead is an enigma in that sense, but by no means is it too out there in any way. In fact, it's rooted firmly in a tried and tested sensibility of both horror and comedy. It just does them both really, really well. Written and directed by Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg, Sean of the Dead is the first entry in the duo's Cornetto trilogy, followed by Hot Fuzz and The World's End, which are definitely worth a look-see, Hot Fuzz in particular, but both of them don't quite live up to the genuine joy of horror cinema that Shaun of the Dead captures. It's a horror comedy written by fans of both horror and comedy for fans of both horror and comedy. For me, it takes the number one spot time and time again, and if the zombie apocalypse 
ever happens, get me a cricket bat because you've got red on you. Well, there we have it, horror fans, our five point list for the top five greatest horror comedies of all time. I know for a fact that there will be many of you doing grammatical somersaults down in the comment section below, but please take note that, of course, this is only five points and there are many, many more entries that could have comprised this list. So, in that case, why don't you let us know your thoughts as well as your own choice picks? And who knows, maybe we can cobble up a part two. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from the past few days. Joe Terrence Universe says, The Jack is back. That would make you way cooler if you said that in every video you do. Would it? Would it really, Joe Terrence Universe? Next up, Rachel Wakerly says, Jack, you're awesome, but seriously, muffin or balms? Love when you read the comments at the end. Well, Rachel, thank you very much. You are awesome too. And by balms, I'm guessing you mean balm cakes? You see, we call them batches in the Midlands, but I say that with prior warning, please don't kick off some kind of dialect debate in the comment section. Say whatever you want. It's bread and everyone loves sandwiches. Well, on that note, I better get out of here. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Cheers, stick around all the way until the end. You know how it is by now. If you were a fan of this video, hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You'll be watching top five scary videos. And until next time, please take it easy.